Welcome to Creative Caregiving and Beyond. More and more people are having to become caregivers for their elderly loved ones, and navigating this journey can be really difficult. This podcast will provide guidance and give practical tips for your family. Your host is Wendy Whiteman, elder law attorney, author, speaker, and leading insight advisor in senior protocol and senior lifestyle trends. Know that you are not alone in getting the help that you need. Let's get started. And here's Wendy. Well, welcome to the show, to another episode of Creative Caregiving and Beyond. And today we have a special guest uh, with our CEO Spotlight. We have Christina Pickerel, uh, CEO and president of Our Little Peace of Mind. And Christina, welcome to the show. Thank you. And Wendy, I would like to thank you from the bottom of my heart for inviting me here today. Oh, it's our pleasure. I'm so excited about what you're doing. And uh, now you're located in uh, Houston. Is that where the headquarters our, is? Our headquarters is in West Houston, but we can we have the ability to work with anyone across the states. Okay. Um, we have a little bit different package if you're within 30 miles of our headquarters, but we have the ability to work with any family across the country. Okay. Well, tell our audience um, about your services. Um, Our Little Peace of Mind creates personalized portfolios and medical binders to support those that can't necessarily speak for themselves or help coordinate and organize the um, medical information overload that you get with a newly diagnosed loved one. Yes. (laughs) Um, We organize it, package it, make it useful and relevant to individuals' needs. Okay. So our packages are completely customized for you okay. as an individual. Okay. Well, you know, that's a brilliant idea uh, because I know with my mom and being the primary caregiver for her, I just pulled out a, a, um, a, a folder from the dollar store and got a Sharpie and put mom's info on it and just stuck some things in there. But it could be definitely more organized. So that's a, you know, it's a great thing to, great idea. Well, we offer two different real uh, two different product lines. We okay. have our medical binder, okay. which is geared more towards your medical information. Um, so often, um, either caregivers of loved ones mm-hmm. or the loved ones themselves get overwhelmed when newly diagnosed. Yes, and you walk out of the doctor with half a dozen sheets of paper. And so, what our binders do is organize all of those papers, okay, so that you have them at your fingertips. It, we also take it one step further. How many times have you been to the new doctor and not able to fill out your medical forms? You don't remember right. the contact information <laughs> for every doctor that you see. Exactly. Or every dosage of every vitamin you take. Right. And that's very important because people don't think about the drug interactions. Right, right. So it's all at your fingertips. Yeah. Um, I recently went to the dentist with my son for a new dental appointment. And they were like, well, what medicines, what does he take? You know, and I'm like, here's the binder. Right. And they just scanned in all the documentation. I didn't have to fill out anything. Um, It just made everything so much easier. Um, We also create portfolios that are designed to share loved one's stories. They act as a roadmap to working with a loved one. Um, My son has had one since he was three. Really? And we share it with every teacher, bus drivers, aides, you name it. We share it with everybody that would be working with Russell. Yes. When, when you have a personal story. I have a personal story. My son, when he gets to a new teacher, they get a list of diagnosis a mile long. But they don't get the real story behind Russell. They don't get the human factor. Yes. They get the diagnosis. They get the, you know. So what we do is we take these portfolios and we humanize the kids. Okay. Okay. And so they come. And Russell's special needs. Russell is autistic, epileptic, IDD, nonverbal. The list goes a a mile long. And those can be a little scary Mm -hmm. for new Mm -hmm. people coming in. Right. And so we use pictures and stories, likes, dislikes, things that need to be aware of, um, that you need to know in working with him. Mm -hmm. I mean, Mm -hmm. you would never think he's a big social teddy bear. 
um, you know, when you see all those diagnoses, you're like, what am I getting myself into? Right. He's five, seven, 200 pounds. And yeah. he's a big linebacker type kid. Mm -hmm. And, but he's a big cuddly teddy bear. Yes. And you don't get that from the notes that get passed on. So we include pictures of him doing normal things. Okay. Um, roller coasters. He loves roller coasters. Really? So, and that's not something a person could, a caregiver or a teacher could even uh, comprehend just it, from a few minutes. I mean, you're, yeah. so you're giving a, 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 it's a, a long story. It's a yeah. comprehensive booklet okay. that shares stories. Um, with Alzheimer's, my grandmother had Alzheimer's. She mm -hmm. passed, unfortunately. And with her, we were able to create portfolios and things like that that shared stories. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I walked into the nursing home one day, and she was trying to put food under the table, and they were trying to get her to stop and not do it. And I said, wait a minute, she's feeding her cat. Oh. And they said, they looked, I said, she, she's in that time period where she thinks she's feeding kitty Tom. Gotcha. And so they were able to, you know, calm the situation. Yes. They just gave her a little paper plate every day at dinner. Aww. And it just made those connections. Yes. Yes. Um, Giving that backstory yes. that, you know, a lot of times when we're going to appointments or an interview process, I mean, there's no way it can mm -hmm. cover a lifetime of information that would, you know, because everybody has like a trigger point, you mm -hmm. know, and even knowing that helps. Uh, with the new, you know, I'm, when I'm dealing with a new caregiver with my mom, and I'm like, these are a few things you may need to know. <laughs> well, with the Alzheimer's and dementia, you know, how valuable would it be, and how how will it make them feel connected if somebody already knows their favorite story? Yes, their yeah. favorite actors, movie, music. Yes. And a caregiver that's sitting with them all day right. can have valuable conversations yes and yes. make the connections with them when they are so disconnected right from right. the world and, and that's important I remember um, I, one story um, years ago I had a client whose whose mother uh, had Alzheimer's and there was a particular talk show and when if that talk show came on the television oh my gosh she totally changed to a, a totally different person and she didn't she didn't like the host of that talk show. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it was it was a it was always a big deal to make sure that she she never saw that talk show and to change that channel. Yeah, make yeah. sure that channel it was the same thing with my grandfather yes. when um he got older. Um and you you never turn certain things on. Right. But in, in on the flip side, you know, Wheel of Fortune and Jeopardy were his favorite, <laughs> so you always made sure he didn't miss those episodes. Yes, 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 yes. Make sure so, he saw those. You know, having the schedules. My grandmother, for instance, she couldn't make the connections between who we were as adults mm -hmm. versus who she had in her mind as us kids. Right. So we made a then and now book for her. Then and now? Yeah, then and now. Okay. Um, it was a picture of us in the time period that she remembered with a picture of us as adults. Mm. And it was able for her, you know, to kind of look and see. And see. And see us, see her doing things with us. Yes, yes. And so she could go back and, you know, a visitor would come in and she, she couldn't quite remember all, but she'd look at her book and then she made those connections. Oh, that's a very good idea. Well, so. even with, um, if, if someone's in a facility and they've got different staff rotating through, and some may work on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, mm -hmm. and they may not see them again to the next week. And they're wondering, who's this in my room? You know, yeah. because we've had four or five days pass by. We yeah. had a, a client at the very beginning. Um, his mom, or Jason, his mom had gotten out of the hospital. She had dementia. Okay. And she was not able to make the connections and remember people from mm -hmm. visit to visit. Mm-hmm. So the therapist would not, she wouldn't let them in. Wow. We were actually able to keep her in her home four to six months longer by going out, taking pictures of her with the therapist and, you know, having little document journals that she could make right on. And, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. when they would come to the door, they would say, you know, go look at your binder. She would see herself with them 
and be excited to see them now. Oh, that's great. And it just, it, So she would you know, literally go get the binder. They would say, go get your binder. Uh-huh. And we kept it in the same spot. We okay. made sure she knew that that stayed exactly there. Yes. And she got used to it. And um, she would go look at herself with those people. And all of a sudden, they weren't strangers anymore. Very good. Now I remember. Yes. And she yes. would let them in. And it gave um, Jason the time that he needed to get her where she needed to be to be safe. Yeah. And I know that was just really reassuring for him, too, that, mm -hmm. you know, you've had that binder there. That otherwise, you'd have to call Jason. Jason had to come over mm -hmm. and well, uh, let the men maybe. Three states or, away. Oh, he was three states away. Oh, my goodness. So, uh, so that wasn't even possible. That wasn't even possible. And she was there. He had just left moved to Florida when everything happened and it all just came together right when he and I made the connection and well it's it's just a great way of being organized I know sometimes I'll tell my clients you know we're putting together estate plans and I'll, you know I'll tell them get all your important papers we're going to put your will your trust and your physician's directive all these things in one binder mm -hmm. so you'll know where everything is but this is even more important because it's it's the medical not only the medical history but the then and the then and now mm -hmm. uh, all that memory jogging information as well. Um, our package, my son's portfolio or binder, is twenty five sections long. Which twenty five sections. Twenty five <laughs> sections. Um, but what I really want to let people know is that nobody fits that cookie cutter mold. Right. Every package is uniquely built to okay. your needs. Okay. We have tracking logs. We have um, a calendars. Uh, we have our interview process to create these is we ask questions mm -hmm. that kind of prompt you to remember things when you're dealing with a loved one. So I started caring for my invalid grandmother when I was 13, really? 12, 13. Wow. And after that, I was a special ed major. And then my son came along and then my grandmother had Alzheimer's. So I've got 30 to 35 of years of yes. experience taking care of loved ones mm -hmm. and coordinating care for loved ones. Um, so I've pretty much seen a lot. When I was um, a special ed major in Maryland, I was also a certified respite provider for the ARC of Maryland. Okay. So I've, I've worked with children from infancy to 22, deaf and blind, cerebral palsy, um, physically ill, developmental delays, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know. So I have seen a lot. And what I'm wanting to do with this company is to share that knowledge yes. and, and help families not have to reinvent the wheel. Right, right. And that's so important. I mean, I can see the, uh, the need for this because you can make sure, I get this a lot, uh, the continuity of care from if someone transitions from a hospital to a facility uh, or even back home and you've got three different sets of uh, caregivers or uh, physicians or medical staff and making sure that is just continuous. It's not, you know, there are no gaps and there are no uh, misrepresentations, you know, in between time. So, well, my son, for example, has three caregivers, okay. four therapists, half a dozen doctors and keeping them all on track, um, you know, the question I get a lot is, well, why can't we just use my chart or whatever? <laughs> how many time, how many doctors have the same charting system? Mm -hmm. There are dozens mm -hmm. of different mm -hmm. charting, you know, my chart, medical, you know, yes. different things that doctors use. And if you go one network to another network, mm -hmm. there's no coordination. Well, our binders allow you to make that coordination okay. and it's right at your fingertips. Um, we've also found them to be invaluable in an emergency situation. That's, uh, that's true, um, yes. You know, a paramedic walks into the house, you know, in an emergency basis, would you know every medicine right off the bat mm -hmm. that your loved one is taking? Would you know their allergies? Would you know, you know, what to t tell the paramedic to prevent drug interactions? Right, right. 
Um, and especially when you need it fast, because there are times when, because every time you go to a, a doctor appointment, they're going to ask those same questions. Uh -huh. What are the medications and are there any allergies? So you're, it's, it's repetition. You're answering the questions over and over. Uh -huh. And then I used to keep it on my phone. But how many times can you not find things quickly on your yeah. phone well, if it's an this, emergency? <laughs> the binder is literally laid out mm -hmm. with a table of contents. Right. And you prioritize what's in it. We set the table of contents um, to your specificity. Excuse mm -hmm. me, can't talk. Um, but we organize it so that it works for you. Okay. Um, we do have packages obviously, but they're starter. Um, they're just kind of starting points. So we offer three different levels. Okay. And, you know, some person like my son, very complicated. Um, somebody else might not need as much, okay. um, especially in the beginning of a diagnosis or whether it be diabetes or mm. high blood pressure. Right. Um, we have different tracking logs that you can track diabetes, sugar levels, you know, mm -hmm. At the very beginning, you, you, most people just have to track it once a day. Well, then you get more advanced, and we have another one that tracks insulin doses, what you ate, how much, you know, what your sugar level was after you ate, and wow. what dosage you had to take. That's and, very good. And we also pride ourselves on if we don't have what you need, mm -hmm. we will work with you to create it. Well, that, you know, you talked about the 25 different tabs. So there is no one size fit all there anyway. Is. It just depends on what that person needs and or not. And even the el elderly, that's different from mm -hmm. a special needs situation. So that's why everything is um, completely customized. Okay. And the other question I get a lot is, you know, why should I trust you? Why is my information mm -hmm. safe? Mm -hmm. So. We have taken as a company, um, and we have all been HIPAA certified. Okay. We are backed by a HIPAA compliance company that, you know, manages our security, um, manages our email systems to make sure everything's locked down. Okay. Um, my computer is so locked, my work computer is so locked down that sometimes I have to turn off the to even go to like the IRS website. It's okay. so locked down. Um, you know, if I want to, you know, log in to pay our sales tax or something, I have right. to like turn off the, the security software for a second because it won't let me go to this site. <laughs> so, so it is so secure. You've it got is secure. Everybody's information confidential. Everybody is secure. We can only keep your information for so long okay. after we print. And then, um, but we do have systems in place that it's very easy to update. Mm -hmm. If, you know, snap a picture of it, send it to us, we can very get it into the computer and, you know, I'm update glad, it. I'm glad you mentioned that. So let's paint a picture for our audience on how to get started. So if they wanted a binder, uh, what would be the process be? Would they just contact you and They would happens? contact us. Um, we do a 30-minute consultation to okay. help you pick the package that's right for you. Okay. Um, once we decide on a package, we have multiple ways to get the information. We have um, a system online that you can submit through a secure HIPAA compliant server Okay. that you can fill in the information yourself. If you're like my in-laws and she's like, I have arthritis. I can't type all that information in. Right. I said, line up your pill bottles and take a picture. Even my phone oh. is secure. Okay. So you can text pictures to the office. You can scan a document and email it to us. Um, we are able to compile it that way. If we need to, we'll walk through it with you one on one um, over the phone. Read, you know, read everything off, and we'll do all the typing. Mm -hmm. So from start to finish, depending on how we get the information, we can usually have it in your hands for two to three weeks. Oh, that's very good. Yeah. And then you help, you know, because I wouldn't know exactly what, I have a general idea, you know, of schedule and prescriptions and mm -hmm. the name of doctors. But beyond that, the, there, I'm sure there are categories I've never even thought about. Um, you guys can, personal care, yes. insurance. Do you want to include a copy of your insurance card? Okay. Emergency contacts. How to get a hold of those emergency contacts. Um, we include therapy sections for my son. 
Oh, yeah, they have good. pictures of him with the therapist and their schedules. Um, pretty much, if you can dream it, we can create it. You can create it. <laughs> so how do how do you update this? So I know the information is. Kind we of support you fluid. for about yeah. six months with updates. Okay. And then after that, um, for a small fee, we can update it. Mm -hmm. Depending on how fast your healthcare is changing, yes, we recommend the portfolios be updated about once a year. Okay. Um, the medical binders, you can purchase a small update. You can also purchase additional logs okay. after so long. Okay. You will get enough logs to track for six months in right. your binder. Okay. Um, but after that, for a very reasonable fee, you can purchase more logs. If you find that, that log doesn't necessarily work for you after six, within a couple of months, we'll tweak it Okay. to make it you know, individualized exactly what to what you need. you need. My mother-in-law needed a pain log. She has very bad back pain. So we created something for her to track her severity onset. Oh. What, you know, what caused, did she do something that aggravated it um, that she could let the doctor know what she took, right. what her pain scale was. Great, great. So do you have support as well after the binders come? After the binder is complete, um, we will, like I said, we offer support for up to six months. After that, our HIPAA kind of requires us to delete you from our system. Okay. Um, we will still have your contact information, but the medical information we um, can't keep. Okay. Okay. So we have to wipe it. Do you think, what's the best case scenario to have this for someone who's at home for their care or in a facility or We actually, or both, or? I have the one for my son mm -hmm. that's at home. Okay. We had different products in place at my grandmother when she was in assisted living. Okay. Um, we, you really, you need to customize for each level. Okay. Yeah. You know, what, you know, for the, the major transitions, mm -hmm. we recommend that you come in and let us go through and see what your needs are, reassess. Yes. yes. And um, so major transitions, like my son is transitioning from being in school to the adult world. So yeah. that's why we're in the process of completely redoing his. Redoing his. And he made the transition from pediatric doctors to adult doctors. So, you know, that was a, a major transition. So we updated his. Well, like, you know, we were talking earlier about uh, there was a scenario where someone was in a facility mm -hmm. and you had a sign-in sheet for guests because oh, yeah. they couldn't remember um, what my, guests My grandmother, she okay. could not remember. So we had a little journal um, in the room for the family okay, so that the family could coordinate who had been there, what they had done with her, um, had they That's resupplied her with things. Yes. Um, you know, so all the siblings of my grandmother or my cousins could all come in and just, you know, say, hey, this is what, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, and the, and the nursing staff would make notes like I sent flowers every week. Yes. And so, because unfortunately I was not necessarily in the same city with her. Right. right. The whole time. So I would send flowers and they would make notes that, you know, you know, so everybody knew what everybody was doing. And there was Nothing getting missed. Right, right. And that was the important thing is not missing anything. Anything. Well, you know, anyone who's ever gone through this with a loved one knows that this is so important. And um, I, these are great tips. And are there any concluding tips you'd like to leave our audience? Um, one of the other things that we do is we can do visual schedules. Okay. We can actually do visual instruction sheets and visual schedules. Um the school taught me very well how to create <laughs> different visuals for my son who's reminders and, and things. Um, if you walk in my house, it, part of it looks like a classroom because it's got so many little visual signs for him. Yes. Um, you know, don't touch hot, you know, yes. different things. Yes. And, um, but we can do things like that, different reminders and, and schedules and visuals. Um, the biggest thing I would say as a caregiver is don't go it alone. Right. You really need that support. That's true. And we, um, I have, over the 30 years that I've been doing this care caregiving, um, my major passion is just sharing information. Yes. And, yes. and getting you set up. Yeah. 
Well, I can see, Christina, why, why your company is called Our Little Peace of Mind, because you do get peace of mind knowing that the information is there if you're not there physically, because we can't be there as a caregiver all the time, mm -hmm. and no one can. And uh, making sure the, the pertinent information is there, there's continuity of care. I mean, that, that's just amazing. You, you, as a caregiver, you also need to remember to take care of yourself. True. And that means, <laughs> you know, having yes. systems in place that let you walk away for a minute. Right. And, and, you know, that's what our products are designed to do is to give you peace of mind and know that your loved one is cared for and, yes. and the information is right there for anybody that you've got helping. Wonderful, wonderful. So if, if our audience wanted to reach out to you and contact you, um, how would they do that? They, we are on the website. Okay. Um, our website is pretty simple, www.ourlittlepeaceofmind.com. Okay. And it's peace, like um, peace symbol, not a piece of pie. <laughs> so it's um, peace of mind. Or we're on Instagram. Okay. Um, we're on Facebook. Um, our Facebook is Putting Your Mind at Ease. Our Instagram is Peace of Mind. Okay. Um, they can reach our office. I don't know. Um, do you want the number for the office? or we'll... We can put it up for you. Okay. We'll make sure we have it up for, okay. the, for um, the audience. The office number is 713-485-6827. Okay. Very good. Very good. And you can always go onto our website and book a Zoom consultation at your convenience. Oh, great. Great. Well, that, that's, that comes in handy for people who don't live nearby mm -hmm. around the state. So, But thank you so much for coming on the show. And uh, if you decide to contact Christina and her staff, uh, tell them that Wendy sent you. And uh, if you look at our episode, I want you to please like us and subscribe to our channel. We've got great information coming up for you on our episodes. And don't forget to go out and check on a senior because it just might brighten your day.